Now we'll look at how we can use the quotient rule in solving partial differentiation problems. So assuming we are given a z function, which is basically in a format of a fraction made up of two functions, an f function, which is the numerator, and a g function, which is the denominator. And you can see from this example that they are both uh, being explained by two different uh, independent variables, which are x and y. So if we are to differentiate the z function with either respect to x or with respect to y, because we have got the x and y both in the numerator and the denominator, then it means that we have to use the quotient rule, right? So the quotient rule, this is a formula that you just need to remember. That um, And also, don't confuse which function you're going to uh, differentiate first and which you are multiplying with first. So for the first position, you always multiply the denominator, which is your g function, to the first derivative uh, of the function, which is the numerator, in this case your f function, right? So if we are finding the partial derivative of z with respect to x, we are going to partially differentiate your f function with respect to x and multiply it to the g function then less the original f function multiplied by the partial derivative with respect to x of g function. And then we are going to divide that by um, g, your g function squared. All right. So looking at, at an example, we are given z is equals to the numerator function is 3y minus 2x. The denominator function is um, y squared plus 3x. So there and there, you can see that uh, it's a fraction where we have got both x and y independent variables. So we have to identify your f function and also identify your g function. So this is when you are working with a single variable where your f function is only dependent on one x and your g function is dependent on uh, the x. But in this example, we see that we have got both x and y. So we are going to be calculating a partial derivative of z with respect to x, right? So our f x y is 3y minus 2x. If you are going to differentiate this function with respect to x, it means the first element, it doesn't have an x, it's behaving like a constant. So if you differentiate this with respect to x, your answer is zero. And then for the second element, which is minus 2x, if you are to differentiate that with respect to x, you get minus 2. And then also finding the derivative of the f function with respect to y, the answer will be 3. So we do the same with our g function, y, two, y squared plus 3x. You differentiate it with respect to x, your answer is 3 because y squared is behaving like a constant. And then when you differentiate the g function with respect to y, your answer is 2y. We are using the power rule there, right? 3x will be, uh, will be behaving like a constant, all right? So now when you have got all the elements that are required to substitute into your quotient rule, you proceed and substitute, right? So the partial derivative of z with respect to x, you need the first derivative of the f function with respect to x, which is minus 2. And then you need your original g function, which is your y squared plus 3x. Then minus the g first derivative of, sorry, the partial derivative of the g function with respect to x, which is 3, which is, yeah, the 3, multiplied by the original f function, which is 3y minus 2x. Then you divide by the original g function squared, right? I think uh, at this point, it would be easier to just simplify the numerator and leave the denominator as it is, right? And then if you do that, yeah, it's a matter of taking out the bracket and then bringing common terms together, right? So in this case, you see that your answer ends up being your minus y multiplied by 2y plus 9 divided by y squared plus 3x squared, right? Applying uh, the partial differentiation into chain rule problems, we have an example 
of a z function given is 1 over x cubed plus zy squared in that whole function raised to the power of 4. So at first glance, because there is a fraction here, you might be tempted to think that um, you have to apply the quotient rule. But the requirement with the quotient rule is that the numerator has to be a function. The denominator also has to be a function. But in this case, in the numerator, we only have one, which is a constant. And then we only have a function in the denominator. So the best way to proceed now will be to rearrange the problem so that it uh, is presented in a manner where we can apply any of the rules that we have learned so far. All right. So an alternative way of presenting the Z function will be to raise the denominator to the power of minus four. So the minus in this case is the one that is accounting for the fact that this function has to be in a fraction and is the denominator component, right? So once presented like this, we can see how now the chain rule can be applied, right? Okay, so for us to apply the chain rule, we need to introduce a new element u, a new function u, u will basically take what is in the bracket there, right? So your u will be equals to x cubed plus 7y squared. And if we are to rewrite the z function in terms of u, it means the z is equals to u raised to the power of minus 4, right? So for us now to apply the, the chain rule, we need to differentiate the z function with respect to u that is finding the partial derivative of z with respect to u. We also need to differentiate our u function with respect to x. So we find the partial derivative of u with respect to x. If we are to solve for the partial derivative of z with respect to y, we also need your partial derivative of u with respect to y, right? So in this context, we now use our power rule to solve for these partial derivatives. Once we have the elements, we bring them into the chain rule equation where your partial derivative of z with respect to x is the partial derivative of z with respect to u multiplied by partial derivative of u with respect to x, right? And you can clearly see that um, the right-hand side of the equation will cancel out the du's, du's, and what you'll be left with will be your dz, the the partial derivative of z with respect to x, which is basically the same as what you have on the left-hand side. So this equation on its own is mathematically correct. All right, so bringing in the elements from the partial derivatives that we have calculated, we get um, minus 4u, this power of minus 5 times 3x squared. We bring back the u because our function has to be in terms of u, x and y. So we read to bring back the elements of the u function. So u is given as x cubed plus 7y squared. We bring it back into the equation, right? And then you can simplify as much as you can, but not necessarily opening this bracket because it's a raised to the bottom minus 5, which might just complicate a lot of things. So what you can do is you can multiply the other elements that are being multiplied to, to this function that is raised to the power of minus 5. And then if you simplify that, you get your answer is minus 12x squared multiplied by um, your x cubed plus 7y squared raised to the power minus 5. Right, so same applies when you are calculating the partial derivative of z with respect to y, right? You will notice that your partial derivative of z with respect to u is going to be the same as when we did the first example with respect to x, right? So it's still your minus 4, u raised to of minus 5, and then you're multiplying by the partial derivative of u with respect to y, which is 14y in this case, right? Bring back the u, substitute with the xy function, and then that solves to minus 56y multiplied by x cubed plus 7y squared raised to of minus 5. Right, so what you're basically noting is that when you look at the chain rule in a single variable and compare it to the chain rule when you have uh, more than one independent variable, 
uh, firstly, you take note of the notation. There we were using the letter D, and then in the chain rule with the partial derivatives, you have to use the rounded D, right? So that rounded D is very important because the moment you write it differently, then it's interpreted differently, right? So notation is the key thing. Other than that, everything else is basically working in the same manner. All right. So to conclude this section of um, looking at examples, I'll leave you with uh, these two questions for you to try them out, and then we can discuss them in the discussion forum on Moodle. Thank you.